What's well going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Refat, coming at you today's video, which is an update on the 18,000 coil that we put in the Koi Lake. If this kind of content interests you, do me a humongous favor, please, and swipe up around here or here, you're gonna see my subscribe button. Hit that, hit the all bell notification. That way, you guys get to see all the weird and wonderful stuff we're up to. Currently Sunday afternoon when I'm vlogging this, it is a hella, hella, hella hot. Thought I'd put a little bit of an update out, like I say, on my last video, I am about to uh, jump on a flight over to Holland um, to go compete at the awesome Koi Show. So that's going to be super interesting. So I thought I'd just come down, show you the lake, show you exactly where we're up to, feed some of the Koi Fry, and give you guys a little bit of an update. I know you've been itching since the last update, and so have I. But let me spin you around, show you the lake. Let's go. Okay, before we actually get into this video, I just want to give a humongous thank you to anybody that has joined in the sale of reeferaquatics.com. We've been adding a hell of a lot of new products on throughout the week. We've took over 300 orders in 48 hours. It has been insane. Any of the Hannah testers that have been ordered, a restock on those was done on Friday, so they will be leaving me tomorrow, which is Monday morning. Anybody that has ordered any of the back order products, that restock is coming on Tuesday, so they will be with you Wednesday. So anybody out there at the moment that hasn't received their PSB, their Batawad, the Lernex and their Alperex, those will be coming out to you on Wednesday morning. Do not fear. Um, you guys are giving me good problems. Like I say, we had 20 of everything on the shelves, and I literally mean 20 of everything on the shelves. The first day alone, when the sale went live, because it went early, we had over 155 sales on the website. It was incredible. That's not just on the koi fry side of things. 98% of that has been on the dry goods side of things. It's been absolutely nuts, the amount of love and support that you guys have given me at the moment. And honestly, it's down to you guys, made this fat kid from Wolves achieve his dreams. Thank you ever so much. There is new products that have gone up onto the sale page as well. Specifically, I'm seeing a lot of people in the UK at the moment talking about bacteria problems. There is a very, very in-depth video coming out on the channel very shortly, all about bacteria problems. If you are struggling with bacteria problems, there is a product called Bacto Ad. So, uh, Bacto Plus, sorry, Lacto Ad, Lacto Aid. So, Bacto Plus Lacto Aid, if I can get my words out, is very, very similar to the um, filter boost that you guys are putting in every time you're doing the water change. If you put this in, it will combat the, the bad bacteria that is in your ponds. It's not a magic wand cure all, do not get me wrong. If you are having bacteria problems, my first piece of advice will be. Find the root cause of the problem. Filter clean, lay off the food, get your water parameters back spot on. If you're having any issues whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me and I can happily give you a call and guide you through best practices on what to do. Like I say, we are holding massive, and I mean massive quantities of fish in stock at the moment. Lactoaid is our best friend currently. It's helping stay on top of the water. The fish are all in absolutely tip top perfect condition obviously anybody's more than welcome over at any given point to have a look at any of the fish before they buy whereas up front as the day comes but like i say sale is still going live until thursday restock on the hannah testers landed on friday they're leaving me first thing tomorrow morning to be with people on tuesday any of the lernex any of the alperex any of the side effects any of the psb any of the bacto ad uh, the filter start gel that is all being with me on tuesday it will leave me tuesday afternoon and we will be with you on wednesday morning like i say we thought 20 30 products on the shelf would be enough however it wasn't so yeah big restock coming anyway enough of me waffling on about the sale reeferaquatics.com for that let's get into the video man let's go okay so on first glances we've still got all of the um the wiring hanging over the top uh, we've still got all the wiring hanging over the top here. You can see where all the koi have been. By how churned up the water is, it is no longer clear. Obviously, we have got a big Eladenta problem in here at the moment, which we'll sort of say did have. However, the koi have absolutely been nailing it, as you can see from here. And all across the back over there, the 
McCoy have actually chewed away at all that as well. It seems to be that this patch here as well is quite a good feeding patch for them. Um, but as I expected, these guys are koi frogs. They're going to be up and underneath, burrowing away, eating away as they do. Now, the thing is with koi, they are, I say bottom feeders. They like to dig, they like to root around and have a good old munch. But as you can see from down here where the dragonflies are, dragonflies do not tend to hover around dirty water. Parameters wise on this are running absolutely spot on. Ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. Obviously the yellow denser is doing a fantastic job uh, of oxygenating the water. We've not actually had to use the, um, the turbine that came very kindly uh, reconditioned for us. We've not ha actually had to use that yet. But believe you me, I'm down here on a daily basis at the minute, hand feeding. And so far, we've not had one koi that's come up to the surface floating upside down. We have had, obviously, quite a bit of water drop off. Reason for that is we've actually had to block up uh, three of the overflows that come into here. The reason for that is simply due to the fact that there's a massive project ongoing and I need to currently find which borehole feeds this. So what we're doing over the next seven to 10 days is actually turning the boreholes back on because it takes around a week for them to dry out and actually stop feeding the lake. But what I did recently was I actually swapped some koi. So I swapped some koi for the JBL auto feeder. Uh, it's gonna make my job a hell of a lot easier in managing this. Obviously I'm all over the world at the moment jumping onto various different koi trips and stuff like that. So I thought I'd come down afternoon, summer's evening, set up the JBL auto feeder, which is just right there, um, and see what it's all about. I've seen them used in the past before. Fantastic pieces of kit. Yes, they are pricey. They are in the region of about 350 to 400 quid. But like I said, I did swap this with Mike Dugzo for some koi. Um, and it is a fantastic piece of kit. But let me go ahead, run you through, and show you exactly how to set it up. Let's go. What it is, is because I was starting at 11 and going through till 12, it was actually erroring. Now feed five, so what you have to do first is you have to put in your hour. So my last feed was at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So I now want to feed at three o'clock in the afternoon. The volume, I just want to go up to four bars, set. Feed six, I want to feed at 6 p.m., which is 1,800 hours. And we'll feed five lots of food there. Set. Feed seven. I'm going to go right the way through to uh, nine o'clock on this one, so 2,100 hours. I've just gone past it. Volume, we'll go for three again. And then feed eight of the day. We'll feed at 11 p.m. at night, which is 2,300 hours. Volume, again, we'll go two, because it's going to be late at night. Set that. That's it now. So now we should be able to skip right the way through. There you go. So the first feed is going to be going in today at 2.07, which is feed two. Sorry, feed one is at 1 a.m., then three, then seven, then 12, then three, then six, then nine, then 11. That's it, folks. And then we skip right on through. So we turn her off, turn her back on. So feed two, like I say, is due in two hours and eight minutes. Now, that's that. So at the moment, we've got it wedged up on a little bit of a lock, uh, a log, should I say. We've got in, like I say, that high protein shiki goi mix that's in there. So what we're gonna do now is literally close the lid and I will show you this absolutely blasting it out at a meter. So all we do is we press that feed button and now it is where it should, in theory, there you go. Start scattering it out into the lake. So this is what we want to do. Keep it set at a meter. 
so we get a decent coverage it is going to take sort of two three days for the fish to get used to that this here is where the new feeding station is from what i'll probably do in a second is grab another log and actually go ahead and just literally prop up the back just to raise it up that little bit more so that can sit on there now like so and away we go but i have to say considering this jbl auto food auto food is absolutely incredible not only is it solar it also mains powered as well these two lights here will start flashing when the food in the bin starts getting low We're about 50 percent full at the moment but the cast and spread that it gets is absolutely incredible what i actually want to do is get the core used to eating in this area here because this here seems to be the area where they've actually cleared off the majority of the Eredensa. This was literally ram-packed full. But you can see that this water is exactly the same colour as this water. Before we actually go ahead and set this up, let's grab a small handful of food out, shall we? And we'll feed the canal. We'll show you some of these guys coming up for food. Because these are some absolute whoppers in here now and i mean really really big koi but let me snap back to you in a second there you go you can see the mouse coming just down there now churning all the water over there you go The coloration on these fish, honestly, is absolutely incredible. That's a big mirror just down there, then. Obviously, we'll keep it as focused on here as we possibly can. You see all the males now in the back breaking the water. And also take you down to uh, quality number one, just there. I'll show you those in a sec. Like I say absolutely full of life super interesting to actually grade these off in the next sort of two to three weeks so make sure you are subscribed along to be able to see that they are doing really really well there you go so the coloration of that one then it just pops it back up over there there you go nice white suey that was then a nice suey there just there popping its mouth up I'd estimate that there's around 80 to 90 fish on there that we put in around sort of two to three inch. There you go, look at the coloration on that. Simply, simply incredible. These guys are constantly eating all the live food that's on them, as well as the substrate feeding that they're getting three to four times a day. Well, yeah, you've just seen me set the auto feeder up. Obviously, these guys went in and sort of two an inch and a half to two inch really really are churning up the bottom as soon as they get used to being on the pellet and obviously we'll start seeing them an awful lot more but we'll go ahead we'll grab a handful of food out of here i'll take you down to the bottom to show you the coin in there let's go okay so here's one of the shallow mud ponds this has got some of the fish that uh dad's brought over and as you can see immediately these bad boys start coming up. Not quite growing as big, but like I say, coloration wise, is fantastic. Nice big shasubi just there in the middle. I'd probably say this is in the region of a sort of 250 to 300 koi now. But again, super green. Oxygenation on this one, by the way, guys, works off the uh, blue pipe you can see sticking through there at the back. yeah absolutely fantastic these guys are doing really really well some real nice colors on these i don't quite know how old these guys are i think they're about seven to eight months but like i say the fish that went into the reef oasis are definitely packing on a lot more size but like i say this was mainly a, an experiment i think these were born in march colorations are looking really really good though but like i say these guys have been used to really really sort of test 
the polytunnels out, see how they go and see how they can cope. What is the extreme that we can take these to? Now, believe you me, off camera, we have took these guys to some absolute extremes. And they've handled it really well. Death rate isn't a lot. I mean, if you look at that Shisui there that was in there, then that was sort of around four to five inches. A whole host of different sizes, colours, etc., etc. There you go, another car crew down there in the middle. Just there. I like say, I don't know what they're going to look like when they come out, but they've been on the mud pond, so no doubt very bright and very vibrant. But yeah, a lot of fish doing the thing. We'll have to, we'll have to bring down a pan out when I'm back from Holland and have a dip in and a scoop out and see what we can pull. That's an update on them though. Let's go off the main jetty now. I've got a small handful of food left. Let's cast that in and let's see if that main feeding area that I spoke about earlier on in the video, if we can actually get some to come out. Let's go. So that there is the main feeding area I've been speaking about. Very small handful of food. Now it's just a matter of sitting back and giving it a watch. Like I say, all the live food that's in here, dragonfly larvae, water bugs, mosquitoes, midges, all the different larvae forms are absolutely doing fantastic. There you go. You can see them now on the edge there where the auto feeder's gone in. Typical. I'll come over the back, they all go over there. So while we're waiting for these guys to come up in there, let's take a walk around the back, check them out. Okay, so where you can see the splashes of water coming up now. That is basically where all these guys are actually coming up to feed. Chasing around the pellet. There we go. So there's a big clump of fish over there. Same as that there. There you go. Definitely, definitely packing on some size, which is really good. There's another load going down to the dozen just there. Like I say, over 18,000 fish in here. A few comments off people saying, I bet they have been eaten by now. The answer to that question is absolutely not. Like I say, we've done all we can to protect this area. There's no heron, there's no cormorant. There's no kingfishers, just doing really, really well. And this is what I'm hoping that having the JBL auto feeder, that you're gonna be seeing an awful lot more of these guys in this area. A, it makes it a lot easier for me to vlog, but again, once these guys start chomping back at this Aladensa and keep pushing it back, we're absolutely laughing. All this is super, super beneficial the cozy ecosystem you've seen the guys in the lake still feeding still going at it down there now but yeah these are absolutely living their best life all these splashes that you see here they're literally all the cool you're mad for the food you can see them off the deck but you can't quite see the colorations or anything like that but that whole back edge there moves let's go around the other side see what we can see i know just down there at the moment i've just seen a quite a big haku chasing around some food but yeah let's go over the back see what we can see off there let's go okay so no set scenes here obviously you just come up from over the back over there watching those guys eat no guys have come up here yet at all i am scanning it around like i say there's that many fish and this stuff here it's so densely packed they're all going to be underneath that yamping all of the live food that's in there a couple of flutters over there then couple more just there on the edge but like I say the beauty look at them all over the back now I've moved again see them all what I am going to do is come down here with my drone and literally just sit my drone up when the auto feed is about to go off and come back down 
like I say, short, sharp little update. You can probably see the sweat beading off my massive five head right now. It's hot, and I mean hot today. I mean, like I say, that water at the minute is sat at 26 degrees in the lake. Growth rates, though, are going to be absolutely incredible. Around 18,000 fish in here. Really, really looking forward to harvesting these guys out. Probably going to do that when I come back from Holland. Uh, I'm there on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm in Arson. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm in Poland, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm in the UK Thursday. It's absolutely insane, but I promise you now, if you guys keep watching, I'll keep delivering the content. Obviously, I enjoy it. It is very, very, very fun to do. The sale is going phenomenally well. And I mean phenomenally well. So thank you very much for the support. And like I said in the earlier announcements, it's done a lot better than we ever expected it to do. So there is a massive restock coming in on Monday and Tuesday. We've got people uh, in store now, uh, members of staff that are dealing with the orders, shipping them out. Apologies for the delay. But like I say, it's gone absolutely wild. We're the cheapest in the UK and a hell of a lot of stuff. And I wouldn't be able to do, achieve my dreams if it wasn't for you guys. It's a massive, massive love. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, which is at the Balding Reefer. Instagram is slightly different. That's at the dot balding dot reefer. But other than that, stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people stay happy. Balding Reefer, out. <laughs>